and wish him all the best in this important national task. Therefore, it is no, there, there is no better way in celebrating the national security achievements to date than to rededicate the national intelligence structures to continue the good story of a further consolidation of our democracy through the creation of conditions of peace and stability that is necessary to make further improvements to the lives of all South Africans, as well as those of our Southern region, our continent, and the rest of the world. I'm once again reminded by the words of our former President Tambo at 1969 Mugoro Conference when he said, I quote, the victories of the National Reparation Movement were most in cases not easy, smooth and, smooth and complete, nor was the retreat of the imperialist ways unplanned or completely defeated. Imperialism resulted to many political, military, economic, and other stratagems to extend its lease of life and to save as much as it could in its erstwhile colonialism. I close quote. Since the advent of our democracy, it has taken us so many years since these ways were uttered by our president to witness their manifestation in our country and the world. The instability of global environment will continue to increase strain on our economic, political, and security foundation of international order that have underpinned global stability since the end of the Second World War. Economic instability, mass migration, political dysfunctionality, and foreign sec security crises have enabled the rise of populist movement, testing the commitments of a number of our countries to our pluralist values. In the context of this intra-civilization identity crisis, the liberal international order is facing an increasing strain. State and non-state actors will seize this opportunity to undermine the legitimacy and control of governments and to promote their narrow interest. As a result, states will be forced to increasingly on threats within their own borders to the detriment of international co cooperation. As security services, the thrust of our mandate is outlined in the NDP 2030, which is our vision. I quote, in 2030, people living in South Africa should feel safe at home, at school and at work, and they should enjoy community life free of fear. Women walk freely in the streets, of, in the streets and children play safely outside, close quote. In describing our current state of peace and stability in our country, our departure point of security services is how South Africa is relatively stable. Notwithstanding our security assessment, which identify economic weaknesses as a major threat to our national security and interest. Chairperson and members, all of us will agree that on our constitutional enshrined rights of association, movement and protest, in relation to the latter, our Bill of Rights provides in chapter two, I quote, everyone has a right to peaceful and unarmed, to assembly, to demonstrate, to picket, and to present petition, close quote. A series of concerns have emerged around the perceived threat towards using fears about security to justify eroding human rights and freedom, finding a balance on how to effectively address security while respecting human rights constitute a key challenge of our time. If we look back in the history of our own country, the struggle, we can see that ours was a very violent nation where people find their voices through various forms of protest that ended with blood on the floor. It was the darkest period in the history of our country. It can also be argued that violent nature of many portraits in our country and the violent nature of certain crime categories in our society today reflect the old violence from which we come from as a nation. We therefore have to condemn any wanton destruction of property, vandalization, and the time's death that is associated with some protest. Last year, we saw the proliferation of violent service delivery protest, violent student protest, violent industrial action. In addition, we have also witnessed violence in relation to demarcation issues, such as those witnessed in Vuani in Limpompo, where schools were burned down out of and then destroyed. We have also noticed housing shortages that have culminated in increased incidents of land invasion, which have been largely been politicized. 
Instability in the transport sector remains one of our challenges. The underlying conflict over ranks and routes is compounded by the involvement of security companies. The introduction of UPA, which has resulted in the conflict with the meter taxi industry, has further exacerbated conflicts in this set. The involvement of some government officials do not assist our cause of creating stability in this sector. We will therefore continue to work tirelessly with all our partners in search of finding a lasting solution to our challenges of this industry. Thank you. In security posed by some private security companies is not only limited to the transport sector as early reflected. It extends to the involvement of national, our national in conflicts in the continent and the other parts of the world. The ever expanding footprint in this industry and the cash-based system of transacting, make, making cabbing illegal activities of this industry very difficult. The continued provision of security services at our national key points, a strategic installation by private security companies, which are foreign owned, is a problem for our country. It is essential that these strategic in installations are protected by South Africans as a means to secure our own sovereignty. It is our conviction that the Private Security Industry Regulation Amendment Bill will assist in resolving some of these challenges, including the transformation imperatives we seek. Our position remains that the right to protest must be exercised in a manner that is responsible, that doesn't impact negatively on others. In all of these, we have also noting the disturbing trend of state and non-state actors who continue to hijack legitimate social economic contents of our people for narrow political gains and aimed at effecting unconstitutional regime change. As political leaders, we must show political majority by denouncing exploitation of joining community concern for our ultra motive. We equally call on the business community when dealing with industrial issues to act in a responsible way when engaging with workers. Honorable Chair and members, personal security and national security in the 21st century both depend on protecting sets of system that never existed before until the 20th century. The digital and information age has brought exciting opportunities in developing our economies, improving our healthcare system, education, agricultural production, our military, provision of services, and the list is endless. It is in the same vein where electronic co computing and communication pose some of the most complex challenges that the world has ever faced. Attacks on any of these networks will potentially have a disastrous consequences for individual and for society as witnessed in the recent ransom war attack of more than 100 countries affecting thousands of organizations worldwide as we speak. The cyber attack affected many big countries and small countries, especially in the UK, the health system was affected. In Germany, the systems are affected, in Russia and so forth, even in our own country. The international community must be concerned over these threats by possible use of such technologies, both in civil and military spheres, at the expense of achieving international peace, security, and stability, undermining sovereignty of countries, and security of states and interfering in internal affairs of other countries, violation of citizen private life, destabilization of inner political and social and economic situation, advancing racism, terrorism, ethnicity, and sectarian strife. Finding a balance of respecting human rights in the field of information security and communication technologies continue to be a subject by various proponents to the question in our quest to secure critical information infrastructure, government has made significant strides to protect this information from attacks that emanate from cyberspace. Our country is one of the targets from cybercrime, and research has shown that our small companies and ordinary citizens, especially our unsuspecting children, are being targeted more and more by cyber criminals, state actors, and hectivists. Ransom warfare 
identity theft, cyberbullying, internet banking fraud, misuse of social network, and many other types of attacks are prevalent. We have made significant strides with the partner, in partnership with institutions of higher learning. We have also launched a building program that will bolster our capacity to respond to the problems of cyber insecurity. This initiative will not only bolster the capacity of government to respond to cyber insecurity, but it will also create the skills needed that will improve our cyber security for both public and private sectors. Good progress has been also re recorded on the policy and legislative environment, including relevant coordinating structures. The Cybercrime and Cybersecurity Bill is currently before U.S. Parliament. And we are, after the executive, we have gone through the process of consultation. This bill will seek to ensure that the country has the relevant instrument legally are in place. Information security and cybersecurity is a matter of discussion global. As we consider appropriate legislation as parliamentarians, we should address the following issues. One, acts of aggression attempted at discrediting the sovereignty and violation of security and territorial integrity of states and threatening international peace, security, and stability. Two, for causing economic and other damages, including destructive impact on elements of information infrastructure. Three, for terrorist purposes, as well as advocates of terrorism, recruitment for terrorist activities. Four, for committing crime, including those connected with unauthorized accesses to computer information, interference into internal affairs of states, violation of public order, incitement of interracial, interethnic, sectarian strife, advocates of racism and xenophobic ideas, of theories that ignite hatred and discrimination and incite and also destabilize governance. Lastly, for dissemination of information that is harmful for social, political, and social economic system, spiritual, moral, cultural, and environmental in other states. A number of governments are using underhand tactics in pursuit of their narrow national interest and national security. In the process, destabilizing a number of countries, like what we have witnessed in Libya, Brazil, and currently in Syria. During the past year, these countries, they've continued with their efforts in collaboration with negative domestic forces, including to undermine our own democratic and constitutional advances. Their modus operandi is through penetration, influencing and ultimately savaging in the quest to advance and promote their national interest. They are using these platforms where they will be in a position to divert governance and the possibility that the broader purpose of government will be hijacked by those with ulterior motives, as I've said. Then they use number of platforms. These platforms are not limited to mainstream media, NGOs, CPOs, foreign and multinational companies, funding of opposition activities, infiltration and recruitment of in key government departments, religious bodies, prominent influential persons, and panning of covert intelligence networks and convict actions on our own soil. As a country, our message is to all South Africans, we should always be careful not to knowingly and unknowingly yield to those who want to exploit your genuine concerns of our people. <laughs> to drive a wage amongst us as people, ultimately, changing the government of the people, elected by the people. <clears throat> Transnational crime network, arms and ammunition, drug and human trafficking, stock theft, vehicle theft, and money laundering have become one of the international security challenges we face. Gangsterism and drugs abuse continue to ravage our communities. We must deal decisively with the prevalence of gangsterism in our communities and crime. Our concern is the targeting of schools and youth centers as recruitment platforms for this. Linked to the issue of gangsterism, we must also know that the security agencies have been working hard. A lot of money has been discovered in our post of entry, weapons, and we've done a lot. Another issue that we are dealing with is the issue about the attack on our economy. Illicit economy 
A significant amount of cash has been detected leaving our shores to foreign jurisdiction. And in our own terms, and in terms of our report, illicit financial flows is expect, estimated at 80 billion rands. With regard to these flows, they were brought into a sharper focus by the work that was done by the AU Commission high-level panel led by our former president in Peggy. The information that has been leaked of the Panama law firm Masaki Forensa has illustrated that there are revelations that some South Africans and companies are being cited in the reports. Over the years, it is clear that South African economy has been affected negatively by decays of transfer pricing and other forms of illegal capital flight by multinational companies, especially those who operate in the extractive industry. In our period under review, the threat posed by illicit mining in precious metals and related crime continue to proliferate across the country, and this is manifested in the displacement of illicit activities to previously unaffected provinces like Wazulu Natal, Limpompo, with respect to the issues of this. This has been exacerbated by our current situation. We have also noted with concern the increase of infrastructure crimes, which affects the livelihood of our communities, syndicated theft, amongst others. COPA affect the delivery of critical services and times results in community protests. And we're working with many of our SOEs and municipalities because these are normally carried by people who know the system inside. And we are going to continue to put more work on economic intelligence and so that we can deal with these issues. We are working currently with National Treasury, SARS, the DTI, the Financial Intelligence Center, and we have done it well in terms of curving this cage. We will continue to strengthen our capacity, given our unique role and position within the global trade and financial environment. We will also continue to consolidate and build on further successes of the past with regard to combating illicit tobacco smuggling and identifying harmful trade practices. One of the issues that is currently on the table is to deal with private sector involvement on illicit economy. The manipulation of our currents by our banks, they are not going to actually go unscathed. At least this time around, after the reshuffling, they have not manipulated our currents. <laughs> Corruption poses a serious threat and direct threat to our reconstruction and development initiatives, good governance, service delivery, and ultimate stability, particularly at local level. We will continue to focus on corruption within the public service and private sector. Our anti-corruption task team, as reported on Sunday, we have made progress more than half a billion rand uh, in terms of the freezing orders have been obtained, 87 uh, successful prosecutions done, especially around our own system of government. We are enhancing up the vetting process to improve the integrity of our officials that are employed in government, including state-owned companies. We are in the process of digitizing the vetting process while finalizing the intelligence regulation that will enable the conduct of vetting and corporate requirements. For us, integrity of government official is paramount in our fight against corruption. Honorable Minister, you have one minute left. Order. In concluding, Chair, we want to thank His Excellency, our President, the ANC, the Deputy Minister, the DG, and the leadership and the Joint Standing Committee on Intelligence. We shall work with VIGA to implement bold and decisive intervention to our social economic transformation in order to eradicate poverty and unemployment. We are obligated by human solidarity love for peace, justice, and equality, to be tolerant, reject prejudice based on race, creed, gender, religion, and sectarianism. Freedom and equality is a cornerstone of a truly united, non-racial, non-sexist, democratic, and prosperous society we all yearn for. Our responsibility is to unite and lead the nation while accepting the pattern of our history, our responsibilities to the people, 
and expects better quality of life. They are hope that their children and the next generation can grow better, have decent work and better life for all. The ANC has led our people in scoring accomplishment that has captured our imagination and attention of the world. We have every reason to be proud. However, we are proud, but cannot allow complacency to set in Honourable and Minister, will never rest in our your time is now expired. I humbly submit this budget vote for the Department of State Security for your consideration. God bless Africa, her sons and daughters, I think. Thank you, Honourable Minister. The next speaker is the Honourable Ngakula. Honourable Chairperson, Ministers who are here and Deputy Ministers as well, and Honourable Members. Allow me, Honourable Chairperson, to appreciate the presence at this debate of Dr. Isaac Dintwe, who has recently taken up his position as Inspector General of Intelligence following his swearing in on the 22nd March. <clears throat> Many of the things, uh, Dr. Dintwe, you will hear in this chamber today will be part of the lessons you should embrace as you ready yourself to discharge the tasks in respect of your oversight role. I want to commend you, Inspector General, for respecting the concept of institutional memory. I hear you have retained all senior staff members of your staff complement. When it has become fashionable, for some leaders of the various entities of state to fire all members of staff when they assume duty. You may be part of the emerging breed that understands there is merit in acknowledging and centralizing experience. That will enrich you as you begin to assemble the building blocks that will buttress your structure of oversight. It is important at times, honorable chairperson and members, to look back and appreciate how far we have come as a nation. I know it is easier to be negative and nitpicking in circumstances where proper analysis is required, <laughs> especially during these days where an amazing... Are there problems? What are the problems? Oh, on, not, honorable honorable member... To interact with me? Honourable Member, oh, just continue with, with your speech. May I also request, may I also request members who enter the chamber to do so in a way that is not disruptive, please. I know it is easier to be negative and nitpicking in circumstances where proper analysis is required, especially during these days where an amazing proliferation of analysis of every form and description has happened in our country. But just think for a moment how difficult it must have been to assimilate the various intelligence structures of the disparate forces in the country to build a united intelligence community as part of South Africa's security services. For the benefit of those who were still young at the time, the security services were defined into main groups, the statutory and non-statutory forces for integration. Those forces constituted some that came from South Africa as it was defined at the time. And the non-statutory forces came from the armed forces of the various revolutionary movements of the time. The statutory forces, therefore, were representing South Africa, the Pandustan forces from Boputatswana, Siskai, Gazankulu, Kangwane, Gwandebele, Kwazulu, Libua, Kwakwa, Transkai, and Venda. Of course, by the 2nd of December, 1994, they were all put together in terms of the National Intelligence Service Act. If we could do this with minor hiccups, we ought to be able to deal with our current difficulties. 
Over the years, there have been various amendments to the law in intelligence to try to make it relevant to the demands of the times. Experience tells us, honorable chairperson and members, that criminals run faster than the wheels of justice. The intelligence community was established to be our people's eyes and ears to countermand, therefore, crime and criminality. The practitioners of intelligence are not only expected to be professional in their work, their sense of anticipation must be extraordinarily sharp. Therefore, they must be able to read correctly the various signs that often pop up to indicate lurking danger. Crime and criminality internationally have badged on to levels which may not have been expected when we formed our intelligence community in 1994. We certainly knew of the specter of international terrorism, but not how fast and widespread it would grow and how using various deadly weapons in cyberspace, it would sow unbridled destruction across the world. Crime and criminality, on top of which sits international terrorism, has easy access to money. The money may be fake or proceeds of crime that must be laundered in various countries through the hands of partners in crime, or comes from supporters, especially with respect to fundamentalist practices. Recruits are always available to crime bosses and terror syndicates. Some of those recruits include children. Our experience tells us that some of those children have been recruited from our own shores, which indicates we are not insulated, although we may be relatively safe at this time. There are certain new measures we have to adopt, Honorable Minister, to ensure that our intelligence community is always equal to the challenges of crime and criminality but especially so terrorism. On one hand, we need to look at our law and how we can make it more effective in the work we do. And on the other, to capacitate our intelligence community at the levels of both human and material resources. The ANC had a concept during its underground existence when it was banned. Where its cadres, especially Um Kondo with Sizwe, were trained on how to implement given missions. The first thing was not just to understand the mission, but to internalize it. It had to occupy your mind. You had to know when to start, when to complete, and when to report. Of course, as you planned for the implementation of the mission as a commander of your unit, you had to know exactly how many cadres you needed and how much resources were necessary for the fulfillment of the mission. I raise this because there was in their strict command and control and professionalism in the discharge of the task. We need this even under current circumstances. We cannot, we cannot afford to be like a daisy guard in our approach to the assembly of the intelligence product because it is that product that will show whether we indeed are the eyes and ears of our people and therefore we are able to protect them from danger. Collection is done on the ground, Honorable Minister. Collectors must not be in offices. They must be on the ground. They must have informers who are tried and tested and spread across our communities and involved in all human endeavors in those communities. All reports from whatever quarter must be checked and analyzed. On our part as parliamentarians, we must go through our intelligence law with a fine-toothed comb to determine whether such law, after such a long time, is still adequate and still can be used as an appropriate springboard in the fight against crime and criminality. We must also ensure that all necessary resources, human and material, are available to our intelligence community for it to be able to do its work. It goes without saying that in the face of accelerated criminality, we need adequately resourced security structures in South Africa. The first resource, of course, is of the humankind. We cannot place our intelligence project in the hands of inadequate practitioners whose presence in that community is based on questions 
that are extraneous to the desire to have highly skilled intelligence officers. The qualification we want to rely on is that the intelligence officer is equal to the job, beyond the shadow of a doubt. That brings into play the necessity of training and retraining. It brings in strict regimes of command and control by immediate superiors right through to you, honorable minister. The intelligence field is not an arena for laggards and non-achievers. It needs officers and agents who fully understand their mandate to, quote, reflect the resolve of South Africans, to live as equals, to live in peace and harmony, to be free from fear and want and to seek a better life as our constitution enjoins us to do. What does that mean? It means our intelligence community must open its ears to hear the early rumblings of our people because where they live, racism is starting to reawaken. There are some rumbles in some communities because our people, they have not, after so many years, started to taste some of the elements of the promised better life. Other frustrations which are slowly growing have to do with increased threats to their lives by criminals, especially against the girl child and vulnerable, vulnerable members of our communities. Our intelligence officers must pick up those noises, those noises from the time they are just a murmur that may be inaudible to the untrained ear. Government as a whole will also have to be persuaded incessantly to address all reported problems to fulfill the injunction by our constitution to ensure that our people live in peace and harmony and are free from fear and want. Your intelligence officers, honorable minister, are surely generating the necessary information to warn of impending problems and may be reporting as they are expected to do to the other arms of the security establishment. Please, Minister, talk to your colleagues in the security cluster on those matters to ensure there is always adequate response to clear and present dangers. All of us, honorable minister and members, must ensure that we work together to strengthen our law and rededicate ourselves to the fulfillment of the constitutional demands to do everything possible so that all our people can finally arrive at the level where they will say, without any reservation, that they have a better life. I want, as I finish, to commend the members of my committee from the various parties represented in this house. And I want to say to them, for as long as we work the way that we do, we are inputting into the very better life that we talk about for our people. And that we will be able, therefore, with our influence, to ensure that the intelligence product will enable us to deal with all the problems that we have at the level of security in our country. And in the end, we shall be happy to say we were part and parcel of the building blocks that ensure that in the end, we were able to reduce some of the crimes and criminality that affect our people so negatively. I want to thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. The next speaker is the Honorable H.B. Grunewald. Honorable House Chairperson, Honorable Ministers, Honorable Members of Parliament and Guests. Met die swak leiderskap die die president geopenbaar, het het ongeveer twee jaar geneem om die post inspecteer generaal van intelligentie in die departement van intelligentie aan te stel. Die vertraging het meegebring dat belangrike sake rakende intelligentie nie met dringendheid aangespreek kon word nie en het Zuid-Afrika op die achtervoet geplaas ten opzichte van ander lande. South Africa suffered the most cyber attacks and our minister also mentioned it uh, and I, I think we are in the committee are very worried about it. Uh, cyber attacks on the African continent in just over one year 
With 2014, losses alone estimate about 50 million, 15 billion rand. The private and public sector and government are not taking the threat seriously enough. Cybercrime often goes unreported, but researchers have found that it is growing rapidly. Cybercrime uh, cyber and cybersecurity bill is due to the process by Parliament this year, which will allow the public to give input into the issues when it opened for comments. South Africa law enforcement agencies are being poorly equipped to prosecute the perpetrators of cyber attacks, whether they are locally or internationally based. Wereldwijd is kieberbedreiging beslist die belangrijkste aspect van enige landse veiligheid. Met die druk van een knoppie kan een land in zijn mensen duizenden kilometer verder in gevaar gesteld of zelfs uitgewis worden. Um, illegal mining is a further ongoing concern across South Africa and the Africa continent, which uh, with, the neighbors, uh, with our neighbor countries such as Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Swaziland, Lesotho and 2,500 kilometer sea line, we need the most effective management and border security. Borders and their control has become one of the most hotly debates issued around the world over the last few years. Immigration concerns led to, be <coughs> to the major political events in 2016. Brexit and Donald Trump becoming president of the USA. While here at home, there have been no calls for Bolter Hall at this stage. The South African Zimbabwe border is a national disgrace. If you want to bring something across the border, it is wide open for everyone just to cross the border. Drug trafficking over the borders is a serious concern. South Africa police uh, is confiscating heroin to the value of 100 million rand shortly after the vehicle carried passed through the uh, Golela border uh, for, uh, at Mozambique. The Honorable President Jacob Zuma mentioned in his speech on Freedom Day that there is a lack of contribution and efforts to defeat cross-border crime and criminals who are taking advantage of this lack of coordination. Safety at our Tambu International Airport in Gauteng has been severely compromised in the past few months with reports of crime activities on the increase. South Africa lost millions of revenue at our airports. To improve passenger security and speed up uh, the process of moving through checkpoints, airports need to upgrade the systems they used at this stage. While Drome offers a great promise to the benefit of a society, the ability to detect and control improper illegal use is a critical requirement for public safety, privacy and also security. Hommeltijen en hulle operateers neem vinnig, vinniger toe as wat luchtvaart overrede licensies kan uitreik. Die probleem met onwettige hommeltijen is dat het dat moeilijk is om ook die operateers altijd op te spoor. Zuid-Afrika is een van die eerste landen wat wetgeving ingestel het om die hommeltijen te reguleer. Begin 2017 was daar reeds 465 geregistreerde hommeltijen tegen oor die 216 die vorige jaar. Nationale sleetelpunte, reservaten, Vlieg in slechte weer, besoep operateers en vlieg buiten zichtbaarheid is verboden. En de bedie wat die wet voor ons achtzaam moet vervolgen te wachten wees. In conclusion, we can say that due to the failure to keep up with the technology advantages, as well as the lack of trust between the JSCI committee and the president, the minister and different intelligence sectors, the patent is not in a state. To protect, to protect South Africa optimally. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. The next week is the Honorable Nschlango. Thank you, Order, Honorable Members. For corrupt leaders to thrive, State organs are first uh, victims of weakening. We have seen this during the assumption of office by President Zuma when he had to chase out General Njenje, who was then, uh, who advised him on the necessity to launch investigation 
on closeness of governors to the head of state, which is President Zuma. It is in this particular context, therefore, EFF rejects this state security budget vote, and we will clearly illustrate the reasons behind this. The Minister, the Minister of uh, State Security, Honorable M Minister Mashobo, never refuted the allegations of Al, of Al Jazeera on his, on his uh, uh, business uh, man connections of Beijing, on the connections between him and the businessmen of Beijing, as he is alleged to have actually sold the rhino horns of our country. He is a Minister of State Security. The recent billions of rands snatched by organized criminals in our OR Tambo airport indicate dangers we are facing as a nation in South Africa. Various gruesome killings, especially in KZN, mostly of ANC members, has never been identified as to what is the motive and who are the forces that are killing our own people, irrespective of their political affiliation. This minister is busy trading with rhino horns. General Mjuli, who was... Chairperson. General Mjuli. Order, order, honorable members. Honorable Mshlongo. Honorable Mshlongo, can I just ask this member why she's rising? I rise in terms of uh, rule. Hey, 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 hey. I rise in terms of order. Yes. In terms of which, uh, Honorable Mashobo, Honorable Mshongo, Mshongo has uh, made reflection that Honorable Minister Mashobo is dealing in horns. He knows very well that. Okay, I've heard, your, I've heard your point of order, Honorable Member. Honorable Mshongo. Did you say that the Honourable Minister is busy trading in rhino horns? No, 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 it's not me who said that it was Al Jazeera. No, Honourable Member, order. Wait, Honourable Members. It is the Honourable Members, Honourable Jeb. Order. Order. Honourable Jeb. Honourable Jeb. Honourable Members, order. Honourable Mashabo to dispute what was aired by Al Jazeera about Honourable. him is not my duty. Honorable Mitchlongo. Please, it's not me. I'm not, I didn't say that. It is Al Jazeera. Honorable Mitchlongo. Please, please, honorable members, calm down. I cannot withdraw for on behalf of Al Jazeera. I'm not a. a Order, member honorable of Al members. Order. I cannot uh, withdraw for Al Jazeera. Okay. Honorable Mitchlongo. Thank you. Let me deal with this point of order, please. Okay. Yeah. Honorable Mitchlongo. Yeah. You must withdraw the remark that you've made. Even if you say that it is a source outside, you brought that source now into the debate. So just I, withdraw the remark and continue with your I, speech, I, please. I withdraw, but it was aired by Al Jazeera. Order. <laughs> Honorable members, order. Honorable Mishlongo. Yes. Do you withdraw the remark? Yes, I do. Continue, please. General Mjuli, who wrote a letter to President Zuma, open letter, saying Zuma must assure his day as a head of crime intelligence. ANC never disputed that, despite the fact that General Mjuli, as a head of crime intelligence, wrote a letter to the sitting head of state to say, as long as Zuma assures him, stay his day in crime intelligence, he will also assure his re-election as the head of, of ANC. Yet General Mjuli is alleged to have been a butcher of our people during apartheid struggle. It is this minister, even to date of intelligence, who has never demanded finalization of that suspension of that man who is still on a payroll of, the, of, of oh, this government. Honorable Mishlongo. There's another point of order. Why are you rising, Honorable Member? Chairperson, I want you to make a ruling on the member being irrelevant because the topic at hand is the budget vote, no, no. not go, go. gossips. No, thank you, Honorable Member. Continue, Honorable Mshlongo. Honorable Member, 
kanye no minister mashobo na yonke into yethu sekunuka nje amagupta kulelizwe then kuthi wake masikhombise ilo ifiska stamping Honourable Mshlongo, there is just a point of order. Let me take that. May I ask, honourable members, honourable members, honourable members, we are debating the budget vote on state security. The minister has tabled this budget vote, and he has invited a number of guests, departmental officials, members of the public, everyone who are here. Let us behave in a way that projects and portray Parliament as a place of debate and not of shouting at one another. Yeah. Let us engage in decent debate. Honorable member, why are you rising? Thank you so much, uh, Honorable House Chair. May I just rise to advise that uh, Honorable Shongo has twice now. I let you sleep uh, the first time, I thought it was slip of a tongue. For the second time, he refers to a member of this house, the, His Excellency the President, in his first name, and he's not supposed to do that. May he please do the right thing? President Zuma. Continue, Honorable Mshlongo. And you have less than a minute left. Honorable Mshlongo, the country is gone. Siambonga We have got no country. Honorable Mshlongo, your time is now expired. Thank you very much. Order, honorable members. The next speaker is the Honorable Tebekulu. Honorable House, House Chair and Honorable Members. Nifisa Ugu Salama Kamenam Tony Shom Tongo, Stalu. Sehangelo and Kosu Elegis was a drench. Nay, a two chul, a sas of Banoboshe, Yobajing Esho of Tonisha, Nengos Matonzi, Lokia Bulawa, Agaz and Velilut. Sia Fisa and Akobe with air, who pure only a seventh. Into my packet debate chair. I'd like to state this. There have been serious challenges in the department due to the inordinately long time it had been without a, an Inspector General of Intelligence. In fact, the entire security cluster has found itself severely handicapped as the intelligence gathering head position had remained vacant for too long. This not only hindered the work of the department, but also exposed the nation to unnecessary risk and the, we are very pleased that uh, the position has now been recently uh, filled challenges have been many and varied like the airplane that uh, ended up landing in one of our neighboring countries carrying banknotes designed for the south african reserve bank with a body of an advanced state of decay decomposition uh, which is classical example or the drama at or tambo International Airport, or the recent arrest of an individual suspected of raising funds to overthrow the government, or even the fact that uh, our sitting president, our sitting head of state, is allowed to uh, attend a trade union meeting, which in it turns out is dangerously hostile to his attendance. Where else on earth would such be allowed to happen? There is a serious security breach waiting to happen in South Africa. And when it does, we will all have ourselves to blame. All this shows the importance of the office of the IG being able led by an individual of the highest integrity and discipline, and one who will take charge and assume the responsibility of gathering information in order to inform the relevant clusters so that uh, they may act swiftly before any real harm to our people or damage to our property is caused. The department will also require adequate funding and resources in order to ensure that criminals and 
their nefarious plots are uncovered before people and property are placed in harm's way. The safety of the citizens of our country in the department's greatest is the department's greatest, greatest responsibility, I'm sorry. Our kids on their way to school and parents going and returning from a day's work and even when staying at home, people must feel safe. Taxpayers dig deep into their pockets when hiring the, the, the services of security companies to provide security in their homes and businesses. Organized crime grows daily and this constitutes a large portion of state security's work. Global terrorism remains on the rise and we accordingly have a duty not only to our own citizens, but to our global partners to remain ever vigilant for threats to ourselves or the global uh, community at large. Chairperson, Mfisa Ugusho Loko Landala, Uba Besi Nako Uksugu Mangiskati, Besi Nekisikbo Anasak Bona Gwenzega Elimpopo, Lako Nagusha Kone Ikoli, Enga Eishen Lapeza Ushuma Amabil Nesichaka Lombili. Abantu Befuna, Aba Kufuna Ayo, Benga Negezo Itubo Lale, Lokota Futik Nekwe Intelligence Enga Napatu Wabo, Uguze Ivimbe, Umona Gado Owenza Gile, Enga Neze Sizwe, Sipaza Msegele Loho Nyaga, Senga Wazu Gwesko Nesikati. Isikbo Nelo, Sisbili, Ila kona gushe, mama university zetu, ngemkanga aso ye fizmas full campaign. Lo mona gala wawu yo vinjwa ngezikati uba wagu kona upigo ulu melele uwenza lo msebenzi. Sasi ngege stanga beza rene nzele lopo kona, okti na gushe ngisho nizle isem oga zezwe. Ebez yo siza inja ekula ayo guti, ma iyo funda igu wazo, osha ulu wazo kwa. Kube zi inko mba. Honorable member, your time is now expired. Kuba nga 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 Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Member. The next speaker is the Honourable Mwabe. Uh, thank you, Honourable Chairperson of the House, Honourable Members, uh, Honourable Ministers, the Deputy Ministers, distinguished guests in the gallery. The national security of our country must be the priority for all of us regardless of our political affiliations. Yes, Chair, there might be one captain of this flight called the South, Af South Africa, but we are all in there as passengers, and therefore whatever happens to it in terms of security threats, we all gonna suffer the consequences. The NFP is quite aware that our security agencies plays a vital role in keeping not only South Africans safe, but also the continent and the global community as well. And we'd like, we'd like to thank them for such a sterling job they are doing in that regard. However, with the increasing security threats and cyber crimes around the world, we urge our agencies to pull up their socks in this regard. Our agencies must upgrade their standards and equipment in order to counter these threats. Chairperson, cyber crimes are not only the threats that must be monitored, but also the extremist activities in our continent and around the world must be monitored closely. The, extre the extremist activities in Nigeria and Syria cannot be ignored as, as these extremists even recruit members from our own communities. The NFP note with concerns the strange behavior of the president of North Korea, Mr. Kim Jong-un, who can just declare every day an armed forces day whenever he feels angry with the US, Donald Trump. We urge the influential leaders of the world to intervene in these, intention, in these tensions in order to ensure that we continue to have the safe world community of which we are a member. Honorable Minister, the NFP has no reason to reject your budget. However, we are not sure as to whether is it enough to face or counter all security threats that our country might be facing. We also urge our government to make sure that services are delivered speedily and on time to our people. Because sometimes innocent service delivery protests by our people can attract security threats when the foreign evil agencies want to infiltrate our country. Honorable members, it is our duty to exercise oversight in all state departments, including this one. We have full rights to expose all malpractices, 
poor performances, corruption, and maladministration. However, as we do this job, we must guide against painting a very bad picture of our security agencies to the world. Let us not paint a picture of a useless, backward, and a weak intelligence agency. It doesn't give a good picture that whenever there's a break-in in someone's house and a dinner set is stolen, we'll be the first ones to say, it must be the intelligence agencies. Yeah. All these things do not, all these things do not give a good image of our security agencies in the eyes of the international community, thereby exposing ourselves to international threats on those who might want to take a chance and test the security of our country. As I've said before, we are all in this flight, regardless of our political caps. Honorable member, your time is now expired. In conclusion, the NFP supports this budget. I thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is the Honorable Deputy Minister of State Security. Honorable Chairperson of the Session, Minister of State Security, Ministers and Deputy Ministers here present, Chairperson of the Joint Standing Committee on Intelligence and Members, Director General of South Africa and Members, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Fellow South Africans. <laughs> Chairperson, allow me to acknowledge the presence of two principals from Moroka High School in Tabancho in the Free State and Khroblas Huop War School in Uppington, Northern Cape. The two schools are among many that we have adopted <laughs> as the state security in our quest to groom and produce future generation of intelligence officers. In essence, this initiative is a continuation of our program that is intended to take intelligence to the center of our communities. Chairperson, the 4th of February, 2017, ushered in the 20th anniversary of South Africa's constitution that was signed into law by the President Nelson Mandela on the 10th of December, 1996, and came into effect on the 4th of February, 1997. The theme for the constitutional celebration is my constitution, my rights, my responsibilities. It serves to communicate to all South Africans that with rights and freedoms come responsibilities. This anniversary coincides with the dedication of 2017 as the year to celebrate the values of Oliver Tambo, as was announced by President Jacob Zuma during his State of the Nation address. This is in view of the fact that Oliver Tambo, the former president of the African National Congress, together with the then leaders of the OAU, now AU, championed and espoused the principles of the constitutional order we enjoy today. As the intelligence community of South Africa, we pay allegiance to the Constitution as our primary directive, which contains our national blueprint of the society we seek to build. We are therefore enjoined to protect our Constitution and to ensure that we create the conditions that will enable the further transformation of our society and the consolidation of our hard-won freedoms. We shall therefore continue to protect our constitutional order, our national values as contained in the Bill of Rights, and we shall remain the first line of defense of the Constitution without fear or favor. The global geopolitical outlook is characterized by social instability, uncertainty, and a slow economic growth. Considering that we are part of the global village, whatever happens in the world has direct effect on us, hence the slow economic growth in South Africa. His Excellency President Jacob Zuma has often made the point that political power without economic power is insufficient in bringing about a complete revolution that will deal with our country's economic challenges. Chairperson, one of the critical roles of intelligence services the world over 
is to advise their governments on threats and opportunities emanating from the global environment, amongst others. It is for this reason that as state security, we are in full support of the government's program of radical economic transformation. This clarion call by our government serves to address the triple challenges of unemployment, poverty, and inequality. To this end, we shall strengthen our work in support of our, economic, of our government's economic development programs with a view to improve economic growth. Chairperson, we have recently been advised that global cybercrime is on the increase. On Saturday, the world woke up to the news of a global cyber attack which affected more than 100 countries worldwide. This horrifying development is yet another harsh reminder that we should be on the alert against such attacks in our own cyberspace. This means that we need to develop more innovative techniques to protect our cyberspace against unscrupulous elements, which will stop at nothing to undermine the integrity of our ICT networks. According to the ICT report released by the World Bank recently, South Africa ranks number 58th out of 138 economies in the ICT sector. As most of us rely heavily on our smartphones and internet to navigate the cyberspace and perform internet banking and other personal activities, this new wave of threat puts South Africa at a high risk of cyber hacking. This calls on us to work together with our partners in Southern Africa, Africa and the world to combat this threat. The South African constitution is firmly rooted in the notion of separation of powers, namely the judiciary, legislature, and the executive. Parliament is the legislative authority in the land comprising of two houses, the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces. It has power to make laws for the country in accordance with the constitution. On the other hand, the executive authority is vested in the president, who is the head of state and head of government, and his cabinet. The president is elected by parliament to serve a fixed term. The judiciary depends on moral authority to be an arbiter in disputes between organs of state and citizens. According to Mr. Myongana, in his paper titled, The Judiciary as the Site of Struggle for Political Power, a South African perspective has this to say in his conclusion, I quote, as a final arbiter in the disputes, the courts will not avoid getting involved in disputes of a political nature. Elements of bias, whether imagined or real, will always arise. But the judiciary has a task to ensure that the courts continue to command moral authority. The first step towards legitimacy and commanding authority is for the courts to be independent and execute their mandate without fear, favor, or prejudice. The apartheid judiciary failed to do this. In the early years of constitutional democracy, the courts managed to keep their independence. However, the last few years have witnessed heightened tensions, which are directly related to the succession battle within the majority ruling party. This succession battle to the highest seat in the land turned the judiciary into the site of political struggle. Whether the damage was done to the image of the judiciary as a result or not, only time will tell, close quotes. In lieu of the responsibility that state security has reflected above, in order for us to be well positioned in a, to deliver our mandate, we need to ensure that we position intelligence at the center of government, and in particular, as the risk management agency of government. To this end, we have cast our eyes beyond the immediate security challenges and determine the kind of state security agency that is geared towards the challenges of the 21st century. In our view, the national security threats that will confront South Africa to the future have their origins in five strategic driving forces, namely the inadequate political and economic transformation, inappropriate management of demographic forces, negative shifts in global power configurations, critical technology-related variables, and climate change. 
State security has developed a strategic perspective that is premised on the National Development Plan, but extends it to the year 2035. We believe that as the national risk management capacity of the state, the agency should have a strategic vision on national security matters that goes beyond the NDP in order to provide Honourable, any Honourable Minister, you're left with one minute. on potential threats and dangers which may confront our country and her people. Chairperson, I have alluded to the school program when I started. We, under, we have undertaken to engage with our young people in high schools, enlighten them about the work that we do, with a hope to planting a seed of some of them to join our community after completing their metric and junior degrees. This program is premised on the need to infuse within our agency young talented people with relevant skills that are aligned to the vision of a risk management entity of government, operating in global environment, but promoting the attainment of domestic priorities. In conclusion, Chairperson, our country's constitutional democracy, democracy is maturing, having turned 23 years old. As part of this maturity, the country will go through challenges, both politically and economically. We are, however, encouraged by the resilience of our institutions that have continued to withstand any uh, Honourable Deputy Minister, your time has expired. The ANC supports this budget. Uh, the, next, the next speaker is Honourable P.J. Grunewald. Achbare voorzitter, ek wil vir die achbare minister vraag. Minister het u nou al die intelligentieverslag wat van Londen afgekom gelees? Want u is op rekord u het nie gelees nie. Besef u wat is die implicaties dat u sê, but I didn't read the intelligence report. The implication is that the president of South Africa is in charge of the state security. That is what it is. Because even the minister, the political head, said I didn't read the report. But the president reacts on an intelligence report from London. So you have to answer to the people of South Africa who is in control. And then I also want to say that there's quite a, a worry from the honorable minister that foreign uh, forces uh, are busy in South Africa because they want a regime change. Let me say you, a regime change will be good for South Africa. That's what I don't want to put on record. But I want to tell you, I'm worried about the internal forces destabilizing South Africa. And I want to use spe specifically the Kulini case. Two days before the march took place, there was a man, Tebele. He walked about around the community. He went to the shops and told them, you must close the shops. The problems are coming. That is an internal issue. I want to make the statement and to say that the present regime is so nervous about losing control that they are misusing the internal safety of South Africa. Yes, I hear the Honorable uh, uh, Charles Nkakula said, we must protect and ensure the safety of the people of South Africa. He knows who I'm referring to, don't you worry. So what I want to say is that is where the problem lies because the people of South Africa are not protected. I want to make the statement to say that the present government is misusing internal forces to destabilize communities and that under a smokescreen of racism to get criminals to loot, to burn, and to threaten the community. And that's a further proof that you don't do your job. And I will have a group of the minister. Minister, he is in dienst van Zuid-Afrika. He is not in dienst van the president of Zuid-Afrika. As he says he will veiligheid verseker for the people of South Africa, then I will say, los the political connections, begin to work, and so that as there is an intelligence report, 
dat het geverifieerd is en dat u als politieke hoofd dat eerste lees en niet eerst die president nie, want dit betekent hij vat die werk uit die handen uit. Ek dank u. Point of order, honorable uh, chair. Honorable uh, Groenewald. Unfortunately, his time has expired. You can ask his question, he's welcome. Um, no, your time has expired, Honorable on on the the That's a pity, order. I would love to give the you the answer. Of, the point of order is that he is, fact, is, is factually misleading the House to say that the internal forces are destabilizing the communities at the behest of the government. Because if that is the case, he should have reported such a matter to the government. That's factually misleading. No, that, no, thanks very much. Well, that's a point for debate, and that's Mr. Kronewald's opinion, so we can't entertain that. The next speaker is Honorable Z.S. Tuvazan. Honorable Chairperson. I mean Tuvazan. Honorable Chairperson, point, on a point of order. Can, can I ask you to request the honorable members that they have to stay awake if they want to ask questions in time? Thank you. <laughs> honorable Tuvazan. Honorable Honorable House Chair, Honorable Deputy President, Honorable Members, Honorable Minister of State Security and the Deputy Minister, the Department led by the DG, uh, Mr. Arthur Fraser Sanbunani. The ANC strongly believed to a theme which says that do more with liquor. The main reason for that is that uh, we are all aware that uh, fiscals, there are fiscal constraints, but as a result, Chairperson, we are still have to do more because we have got the vows with the community. Our vows are make sure that we provide safety, make sure that we provide the security. And we are saying to the South Africans, ANC is taking that to heart. Indeed, we shall do that in making sure that we are doing that. Honorable House Chairperson, let me tell the story. On Monday, Mr. Stradom, who went to prison number four in Johannesburg and look at what was happening and listen to the stories. He says, I quote him, how do I forgive after I've heard about the things that happened into this prison? I close quote. That prison is the prison which captured Abu Mamgui. That prison is a prison which captured Abu Babu Joslovo. And today the people, they look at the state security, like it is sitting and not doing anything and forgetting the yesterday. The ANC recognized the seriousness of the illicit economic activities that are conducted within our country. I just want to maybe to, to give some little lecture that when you talk about illicit economy, we're not referring to the cash, like the members in this house will talk about the Guptas. Illicit economy refers to the human trafficking Illicit economy refers to the counterfeit of goods. Illicit economy, it means a lot of things. So it's either you shush your own, close your ears if you don't know and you have never been to school. Illicit economy includes so many things. And as a result, it is for this reason that the minister with his department, together with the deputy minister, they are taking this concept of illicit commerce and making sure that they drive the ANC values of ensuring that South Africans are all safe, irrespective of the color of the creed across the spectrum. Honorable House Chairperson, as the ANC, we also acknowledge that there is a problem when we try to make sure that we deploy the cadres to the places which we strongly believe they are should be there. And remember, I am endorsing it because when we deploy, we deploy a trained, professional, experienced cadre for one reason. You can't buy the honesty. You can't buy loyalty. There is no price for that. 
I don't care how much you're shouting at me, but the bottom line is that because of that, the ANC will do it and nobody is gonna stop us to do that. Honorable Chairperson, Honorable, Honorable, Honorable Chairperson, as ANC, we are also saying that there are microeconomic factors which are so bad that they are affecting, you know, the guilty, they always feel bad. Because they are so bad in such a way that they are automatically dropping the economic outlook. They are automatically dropping the, the currency. They are dropping so much. As a result, this is what the ANC is saying. We find ourselves have to work and do more with little because the three enemies are still there. That's inequality, that's unemployment, that's poverty, and we need to fight with that. And, and based on that, we need to make sure that, honorable chairperson, what the, the, the state security department has done, we appreciate it. They have established a unit which is called the Research and Development and Analysis Unit. But as we appreciate that, uh, Honorable Minister and your department, however, though, we On are point saying, of order, Chair. we will appreciate. Honorable Member, there's a point of order. Yes, uh, Honorable what's the Chair, point of order? Uh, the guest at the gallery is not supposed to take part in the debate, and they are continuing um, making statements behind us and they are not allowed to take part in the, the debate. We are, and the, uh, this guy is continuing. And if he continues, he needs to be thrown out because this is our debate, this is our work, and he's not supposed to take charge, uh, take part in the debate. So I was expecting- Point taken, uh, Honorable Man. Because these guys are very, it's, it's, it's rude, the things that they are throwing at us. Yes. No, no, no. Thanks very much for, the, for bringing that to attention. I'm sure guests are aware that they, they are not supposed to participate in the debate. So we want to make a special plea. I've not heard them participating, but if they are, I want to make a special plea that a guest you should know that you are not part of the debate. Continue, Honorable Member. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable House Chair. Honorable House Chair, I was interrupted when I was endorsing and appreciating as an ANC and an and, 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 and initiative that was taken by the Department of State and Security to establish the research, the development and analysis unit. And as, when I was about to be interrupted, I was actually saying what the ANC is saying, irrespective that we are appreciating, are saying we will appreciate that that unit is being headed by the CADA that is trained, professional, and experienced. We will, because you want loyalty. People's behavior you can't determine and confirm. So you rather, so you rather have a trained and experienced. But over and above that, we are saying we need to have an economic intelligence unit. Because with that unit, it is gonna be so critical that while you've got that division, then the information get, gets collected, it's able to be analyzed and be given to the relevant our departments that are to make sure that uh, we then act you know, ahead of time to stop any economic risk rather than to be reactive. So based on that, indeed, we are saying, well done. Uh, that shows that indeed you are going to do more. Now, some of the things that were highlighted by, 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 by the members that they came before me. You know, it, it, it is so hurting that uh, you decide not to be within a space which is going to enlighten and empower you and give you more information. I don't remember you're left with one minute. Up, and the issue is that that, 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 that pertain the country that are sensitive and you come here and you mislead the, the community of South Africa. It is, there, is, there are no internal forces that are destabilizing this unit. It is only those, the very same people who come here, who run away for the vetting when they are being called and to come to the camp and to be vetted. So we now know ANC support this budget number seven. Thank you. No, thank you very much. The next speaker is 
Honorable Carter, is she here? I've not seen her. She's not here. And then the next one is Honorable Smith. Honorable Chair, it is a task of a regularized and neutral intelligence aid community to provide government and the South African public with independent risk assessments to protect the communities they serve. We have, however, recently seen the Intelligence Committee either being partisan to ANC factional battles or being misused by politicians. Both scenarios are inexcusable in a modern constitutional democratic dispensation. The recent use by the president of the so-called intelligence report to hire the former, to fire the former finance minister and his deputy can only mean that a certain structure of the intelligence society used the report to assist President Zuma to settle a factional dispute in having the minister and his deputy fired. Alternatively, it possibly means that an intelligence structure may have used an intelligence report to obtain a political outcome suitable to its political masters. Both scenarios are unacceptable and illustrate unconstitutional actions by intelligence structures and the ANC government, which should be rooted out immediately. Following legal action by the DA, requesting reasons from the president as to why he fired Minister Pravin Gordon and Deputy Minister jo Kabesi Jonas, the truth will soon be revealed. The legal framework of the intelligence services appeared to be defective and in need of reconsideration. Acts reflecting the approach by the previous apartheid government are still in the statute books. And despite the General Laws Amendment Act passed in 2013, a careful analysis of the legal framework is required to ensure that it conforms to the Constitution. Urgent attention by the Standing Committee on Intelligence is therefore required in this regard. Recent media coverage concerning Minister David Muslobo and his alleged links with a massage parlor owner have done a major disservice to the services. The unfortunate death of a motorist in which the ANC's minister's official vehicle was involved has created further damage to the image and integrity of the intelligence services and its political head. As a broader democratic society, we are duty bound to keep the intelligence services to account. The recent appointment of the Inspector General of Intelligence, the IGI, will assist in dealing with complaints against intelligence structures. It is important that the IGI remains independent and alert to any alleged form of kleptocracy or autocracy by the services and report fearlessly to the Joint Standing Committee on Intelligence. The latest media reports relating to the global virus cry warm Crywim illustrates the need for effective cybersecurity measures in curbing a growing cyber war phenomenon. South Africa needs to be able to rely on modern and effective equipment in rooting out this illegal activity in a responsible and accountable manner. It is clear that more needs to be done in this respect. We are all duty bound to ensure that the intelligence services accounts responsibly and act in a responsible manner. I thank you. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Honorable Titi Kamede. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first things first, the ANC supports this budget vote. Uh, yes, of course. And uh, where I come from, where I come from, they always say, without showing, showing anything of substance. In, in this budget, and for this department specifically, it is about information collection, information gathering, and supplying it to the relevant authorities. As we speak right now, South Africa is facing a wave of hostility that is led in the name because some people lack some information of foreign sponsored people. Wave of hostility refers to propaganda, state campaign aimed at mutilating at the West, liquidating the governing party. The purpose is to invoke unprecedented hostility towards the government by citizenry and thus unleash a, a thorough craft and systematically orchestrate the resentment 
that may lead to an open rebellion, if not arrested. This is aimed at delay derailing the government transformation, and it's not new to South Africa. It has happened in, uh, in other countries, starting from Vietnam. Over the years, the government, through the liberation constitution, has allowed some foreign-funded NGOs and agencies to operate freely in this country. These agencies portray themselves as humanitarian agencies, whilst they also seek to undermine a democratically elected government. We have seen the mushrooming of these NGOs and more recently uh, foundations. They have infiltrated different areas of society, including the judiciary, which they have effectively turned into a commission against the government. This is visible through the active role of information peddlers. Some are also here in Parliament and in this House. In the majority of cases, information peddlers have been serving as convenient conduits used by Western governments to orchestrate disinformation, dirty tricks, social engineering, and overall covert operations that aimed at hurting the reputation of this government and its leaders. It is notable that the majority of individual information peddlers who had links with apartheid security agencies at pre-1994 period remain active. Most of these individuals are currently active in private intelligence companies or work as individual intelligence consultants. We really miss some of the members of this house in this committee who do not attend for one or other reason. Otherwise, they will be empowered. There's also the privatization of the prosecutions. This is part of an offensive against the government. Although private prosecution is one of the options made available in the South African litigation system, the adoption of this route is suspect. Intelligence observations indicate that private pro prosecution is aimed at reinforcing legal-based campaign against this government that is led by the ANC. This is because some NGOs behind the establishment of private prosecution have been pursuing a legal route centered on the exploitation of the section 89 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. To have, for instance, some people enjoy because they have got nothing else to do, they will always say the president must be removed from office. The ground of serious, on the grounds of any serious misconduct or violation. There is also that submersion of government processes through the courts of law. The Constitution empowers the judiciary to reduce and set aside any legislation which it deems to be inconsistent with the spirit and object of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. The Constitutional Court is, a, is, to empower, is empowered to interpret the Constitution by so doing often delve into matters belonging to the political arena thus interfering with the functioning of the executive and the legislature. In practice, it means that judges, regardless of race, majority have been inherited from the apartheid legal system, are better positioned to subvert and or sabotage the government's transformation agenda. The South African legal system has allowed foreign-funded NGOs to continuously frustrate government processes through court proceedings. The untransformed legal system in South Africa continues to serve the interests of the few Anglo-American interests at the expense of the majority who are at the receiving end of injustice. When the government attempts to reform the legal systems, NGO accuses it of staking the judicial system with a compliant political voices. There are also efforts to control the legislative process. Foreign sponsored agencies are also involved in attempts to control and shape the legislative process in South Africa. To date, they have managed to delay the finalization of the state information uh, bill and its enactment into law. This is because the bill is aimed at protecting South African state against hostile foreign forces. Contrary to the attitude towards the protection of state information bill, foreign funded NGOs were pressuring the state president to sign the Financial Intelligence Center Amendment bill into law. And President Hon Honorable the Member, you one minute left. There are two in conclusion, Chair. 
there are two major things which might bring stability into our country. One is to speed up radical economic transformation. Two, two is the expropriation of land without compensation. On this one, on this one, my branches are mandated me to submit a motion to uh, watch the space. Yeah. Lastly, I want to thank the minister and the deputy minister of state security. Uh, if it were not of you, uh, with your vision and foresight, South Africa would be in ashes by now. I thank you. Order. Thank you very much. Uh, the next speaker is Honorable, Honorable DJ. DJ Stu On a point of order. What is the point of order? Um, Chair, I think you must rule on it and then make it very serious because I think this facility is not proper for us to have debates. As interjecting for us as members of parliament, it's allowed. And I think to guests, uh, they feel the need to participate in our interjections. And I think that is not allowed. We, as members of parliament, are voted in in it's our constitutional no, it's rights. No, okay, it's honorable member, I've heard you. No, it's a very serious No, I've heard your point. I've we heard your have point. We security breaches here. No, I've heard your point. Very, my, 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 sit my down. My must take note. Please, I'm not finished No, with sit my down, I've heard your point. No, thanks very much. The next speaker is Honorable Stoop. Honorable Chair, you need to rule on it. I quote a point of order. You need to rule on it. That is how it works. I know that you may be new in it, but you are not new in Parliament. No, I've so ruled. Point of order. No, sit down, Honorable Member. No, 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 sit down. You I've ruled on the matter. No, I've ruled on the matter earlier on. And I've not had anybody interjection. Yes, I've not had anybody. I'm saying I've not had anybody interjecting and participating in the debate. You might have heard yourself, and I'm saying I did. I did. I listen. 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 On a point of order, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Chair, on a point of order, on a point of order, Honorable Chair. No, I'm not. Honorable Chairperson, on a point no, of order. No, you can't behave in the manner that you're behaving, Honorable Member. I rest my case. I've ruled on this. No, I've ruled on this matter. You can't continue arguing on the basis of the rule that I've made. That's not being honorable. Now, I've ruled on the matter. So what do you want me to do? No, I've ruled on the matter. Honorable Khunneval. Chair, can I ask that we restore order? Can you just appeal to the public again, please, to restrain from any comments? Then we can continue. Thank you. House Chair, House Chair, this side. Uh, Honourable Mgwani. House Chair, in terms of the, the string of orders that have been raised, the, the point raised by Honourable Law had been raised earlier on, on which you ruled. She's unduly repeating herself, and she's not supposed to do that. The second one, we just request your courtesy chair that when you take a point of order on the floor, you also look this side. Because order, Honorable Loom. The member is on the floor. You must, be, you must respect him as well. The, Honorable Mgun, proceed. The, the Honorable Deputy Chief, we've had her hand up for quite some time, even before Honorable Khunaval, who just stood and spoke to the mic without having been pointed to. I thank you, Chair. No, thanks very much. Uh, uh, I have said the public, you are allowed, you have been invited to be part of this, but you are not allowed to debate or participate or interfere into the whole of the discussion that is taking place. You are here to observe, nothing else, nothing more. Can we 
make a special plea to the, to the members of the gallery to respect that. Thank you very much. Honorable Stoop, can you proceed? Voorzitter, <laughs> Verschillende factoren maken dat Zuid-Afrika een ideale teelaarde kan ontwikkelen waar extremisten kan gedijen. In die onlangse verleden was daar dan ook verschillende incidenten wat daarop deed dat Zuid-Afrika een terreeraanval te wachten kan wees. Die aanwezigheid van ongewenste personen is een directe uitvloei van corruptie in departementen wat georganiseerde misdaad ondersteun. Dit minister is een bedreiging voor die staat. Daar is die groei in onze economie niet. Dit veroorzaakt dat duizenden mensen werkloos is in een armoede leven zonder behoorlijke dienstlevering. Dit is een bedreiging. Onwetige handel in dwelms, die voer en renosterhoring is een bedreiging. Die eenheid wat in die Zuid-Afrikaanse inkomstendienst gevestigd is om die smokkelhandel en sigaretten te bekamp wordt ze meer ontbind. En personen wordt afgedank. Op hierdie wijze wordt leden van die regerende partij beskerm en die smokkelhandel kan ongestoord voortgaan. Minister, dit is een bedreiging. President, Jacobs, uh, President Jacob Zuma se beheptheid met die Gupta familie en staatskaping het geleid tot die voormalige minister van Finansies afdanken. Minister, dit is een bedreiging. Ons kredietgradering wat tot rommelstatus geclassificeerd is, is een directe uitvloesel, uitvloesel van die president se onbesonde beheptheid met die Gupta plunderaars. Maar minister, u ziet het blijkbaar niet als een bedreiging voor die staat, zijn veiligheid niet. Een stede dat u eerder een positieve rol speelt om die economie te beschermen en daardoor te verzekeren dat daar voor allemaal werksgeleentede geskep wordt, verkies u om dit wat opzichtelijk verkeerd is te beschermen. Dit is dan ook geen wonder dat u om al die verkeerde redes niet pers aangehaald wordt nie. En ik noem maar een paar. Dit begin in 2015 met die opening van die parlement toe die opdracht gegeet dat alle cellfoons zijn geblokkeerd wordt. 6 maart 2015, een verklaring door het departement dat advocaat Tuliman Ocella en andere onderzoek wordt voor de betrokkenheid bij die CIA. 16 augustus, ik verzoek aan Tuli Zuma om die presidentswoning te verlaten. 26 september, ik aankondiging dat Arthur Fraser als directeur-generaal aangesteld wordt. Ten spijte van die aantijging Stienom in die mail in Guardian. 13 november, Al Jazeera zijn verslag rakende die beweerde betrokkenheid bij onwettig handel met haar noordstoorwerings. 9 december wordt hij daarvan beschuldigd dat de nieuwe vakbond gestig wordt om die ANC vakbond dit te destabiliseren. 31 januari 2017, ik ontken dat hij met Msebout Lamini van Fiesmas vol vergader het, terwijl hij kort van te kort van tevoren verklaard het dat hij bij verschillende geleentede bij I aan huis was. 26 februari verwijzend naar persconferentie op 2 maart 2016, wat verband ook met 27 bezelachtige klachten die in leren van die saas rook unit. 5 maart uit, uitspraken rondom attempts at regime change. 6 maart de beperking van sociale media en internet. En laatstens op 11 mei 2017 in de Mail Guardian opinieartikel, wat ook naar verschillende negatieve incidenten verwijst waarbij u glo betrokken zou wees. Minister, iets is drastisch verkeerd bij uw departement. Die dia zal verzekeren dat er schoon effectieve administratie komt, waar de rechten en veiligheid van allemaal beschermd wordt, en steden van het dienst daarop ingesteld is om die negatieve en bevoordeelde elite te beschermen. Dat zal helpen om ons democratie weer op koers te krijgen. Ik dank u. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Honorable J.J. Skosane. Honorable Chairperson, His Excellency Deputy President, Honorable Minister of State Security and Deputy Minister Mulekane, Honorable Ministers present here and Deputy Ministers, Chairperson of Portfolio Committee, Babung Akula, 
DG of State Security, and IG Dr. Dintwe, honorable members, distinguished guests, fellow South Africans, I greet you all. Ekamen Lesangano, Ebusa, we African National Congress, Isigima, Nogamugela, Nogusegela, Ipachet, Vote Gangongoche, Ubaba Umashobo, Nogusatulula, Gabanzi, Nomkomo, Gubereka, Gomyango, Ezubusholi, State Security Agency, Lomyango, Shatulula, Gabanzi, Uguti, Uzogbereka, Jan again, Chichi, Lobashanga Bezana Naso. I should think. Honorable Chairperson, it's important to indicate that the government planning process through the National Development Plan sets out a clear vision of where we would like to be as this country in 2030. It talks of how we would have dealt with the three triple challenges of unemployment, inequality, and poverty. But in order for this country to achieve its objective, we need to ensure that we have a plan to deal to protect the critical information infrastructure of government, which houses inf information databases of millions and millions of ordinary South Africans. The threat that arises from unsecured cyberspace for our country is huge. For instance, disruption in governance economic activity, the delivery of essential services such as water and electricity supply, transport security, health, and many more. The planting of political and economic and competitive edge resulting from the compromising of sensitive information system or the manipulation thereof. Significant losses incurred as results of cybercrime of various forms infringement of the sovereignty of democratic governance and political process, inclusive of elections as we have seen in the USA. Explosion of the cybersphere as an enable for other forms of crime, undemocratic and illegal activities. The African National Congress policy document have always sought to position that developments uh, it develops a roadmap towards the, the fourth industrial revolution and ensuring that our ICT industry does become a significant driver of the national democratic revolution and the attainment of the non-racial, non-sexist, democratic, and prosperous South Africa. The state security agency must be given the support it needs in order to deliver on its mandate and help protect our cyberspace. Chairperson, let me pause a while, I'll come back to my speech. Let me address some of you issues here. One, the issue of intelligence report, vis-a-vis -vis given by the president to the former minister of finance, Comrade Privin. I don't know, Chairperson, why the FFP is having so interest on this matter. Privin is a member of the ANC, is not the member of the Freedom Front, even if that, that change has been made. I don't think it's proper for anyone to lament on the matter. There are legal processes. If you want to pursue the matter, just process the matter on the legal processes. Honorable Chairperson, the President has used the rules and the constitution to deal with his work on the reshuffling and so on. We can't just come here and stand and talk about the intelligence report all the time. Honorable Chairperson, I must say the issue of a, the issue of appointment of, in, of if Inspector General to took such a long time. It was because not all of us were agreeing on this matter. As parliament, we were disagreeing on the matter, but we found a way until we come up with the name of the newly in, uh, appointed inspector by the name of Dr. Dintwe. We do have an inspector general now. Now, on the issue of a rhino potion, those who do not know 
This rhino poaching belongs to the environmental affairs. If you want any information about it, go to the environmental affairs or come to me after this debate. I will, I will give you more information on this matter of rhino poaching from the environmental affairs. Honorable Chairperson, I've got a problem. Uma umuntu, bemtumela impi inutambu yolwa impi. Afige la pa alu impi enge yonanga yaziku. Like Honorable Mshongo from the EFF, uze lana, uzo kuluma nge go president, uzo kuluma nga makupta. In the state security, we don't have guptas, we don't have state security, we, do, we don't have the president who is dealing with issues of the, of the intelligence. Tina intuasienza agolapa, si tila with intelligence matters. Uza la uzo kuluma ngendo za mapolisa, uzo kuluma ngo babu mjuli. I don't know, Chairperson, whether bega bega guti ugu wrong platform or bega nga bon. But I just assume guti bega nga zugu ugu tugupi, bate hambu yolwa, wafika walimpe anga yaziyo. Aga yazi lempi. And Honorable Nshongo from the EFF and your colleagues were still waiting for your member who have been, in fact, sent to us to work in this intelligence committee. That, that member must come for a vetting. And if you have got an interest, if you have got an interest, anyone who's having an interest on intelligence matter, come along, we'll give you an opportunity, you will be vetted and you'll participate fully and will know how do you talk about the issues of intelligence. Point of order, Jay. Point of order, Jay. Yes, Honourable Member, what's the point of order? I, 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 EFF has got a, a lot of work. It cannot go to an no, issues committee. No, like Honourable you. Member, that's not a point of order. Continue, Honourable Member. Honourable Chairperson, in order to address these deficiencies and the risks posed by cyber security, the SSA has prioritized the following, the following initiatives and actions. One, fast track the capacitation of cyber security structures as envisaged by the national cyber security policy framework. This includes the National Cyber Security Center, strengthening cooperation on cyber security with SEDEC, AU, and BRICS partners. You have one minute left on the Finalize consultations on the national cyber security policy with the public and sector. Honorable Chairperson, as I conclude, I, I like to say, as ANC, we support the budget. Sirakela, Pambili, Nogu Vigela, Pasile Kate, Isaula Africa, Siakuba, Rizuela Pili. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honourable Member. I now call upon the Honourable the Minister of State Security. Uh, Honourable Chair of the Session. Order. To His Excellency, our Deputy President Ramaphosa. When we want to, on behalf of the Department, we, we want to, to thank the members for for their input, but we do respect those who sit with us in the committee. I must be able to raise my disappointment, and I must be able to thank his uh, honorable Mwabe. Security of our country is everybody's business, and we had an agreement that whatever we do, we'll put our politics aside. But ultimately, when some of these things happened here, I was reminded by the words of our former president, Tam, that I want to repeat for South Africa to see through us as leaders. I quote, the victories of the national reparation movements were in most cases not easy, smooth, and complete. Nor was the retreat of the imperialist way, ways always unplanned or a complete defeat. Imperialism resorted to many political, military, economic, and other strategies to extend its lease of life and to save as much as it could 
in its erstwhile colonies. South Africa will never be an exception. They will let, let, let us go. There is a major issue that confronts us as leaders here. Leaders across the globe, even in our own country, you have a unique opportunity to advance humanity. By developing policies and strategies that must promote peace and stability, which is called existence. As South Africans, let's live up to the reality that when we raise security issues, either political, economical, there's a fundamental issue that has become a problem, our economy. We must agree that as a nation, as we continue with this path to try to defend the status quo, the system is unsustainable. We cannot as a nation, when the majority of our people continue to be held back in their own country of birth by economic bondages. Our majority of our people are still suffering from poverty, inequality and unemployment. These people are human too. Let's work tirelessly in our own diversity as South Africans and through a united action to embrace and threaten within them and realize their potential. We are not going to run away to give hope and the vision what the ANC stand for because there are those who are offering nothing, who are in a journey to build a country where a society is going to be truly united, will be non-racial, non-sexist, democratic, but more importantly, prosperity. You can have something today, but if others, they continue to be poor. The children of the poor are going to eat the children of the rich. That's not sustainable. With due respect, there are those people who come with revolutionary slogans. They will never give you a revolutionary advance. Mshunishwa Babenjoman, I ubukuluma ngeni debate. Ushanga ni sama poisa, ushanga ni sanati. Ngeli la ngentoli tuba dogleta ilunga le nu elimkoga. Sizogwa zuchi silvete patu shanga ni sizi. Amalunga ashon pegi. They must be knowledgeable people. They must, when they speak about the issues of the state, and speak correctly. Thank you very much. Any death, irrespective of our standing, we regret that, and we know what we need to, to be able to do whatever it takes. Our condolences to those people who have lost their lives. But to try to use any death to score political points is stooping low. We must be able, as a nation, to say crime does not pay, and we must be able to deal with. On terrorism, as a last point, we want to thank our guests that are here, especially from the Muslim Judicial Council that are here. We have avoided, as a South African, to reduce matters of terrorism to religion. And we work with these communities tirelessly behind the scenes because we don't want to be getting any acclamation. And tirelessly, we continue with have the men and women who keep our country safe, whether state security, crime intelligence, and defense intelligence. The leadership of defense is here. The leadership of the police is here. These men and women, they are our unsung heroes and heroines. You will continue to enjoy your liberties and freedoms because we are not going to rest on our laurels until South Africa achieves its visions. But along the way, they will be detractors. And we're not going to be distracted. Your time is now expired. Lastly, again, I want to thank the leadership of the ANC, our president, our deputy president, the leadership from provinces, the youth league, MKMVA, and more importantly, my wife, my sisters, and my, and my, and my cousins. Honorable Minister, your time is expired. <laughs> Honorable members, you are reminded that the debate on higher education and training budget will, will take place at 4.15 p.m. in the National Assembly Chamber, the debate on health in the Old Assembly Chamber, and the debate on mineral resources here at 4.15 p.m., all three debates. That concludes the debate and the budget and the business of this mini plenary session. The plenary will now rise. Amen.